Hey YouTubers, back with another Sony A7 Mark II video. And this time I'm going to talk about shooting Leica R lenses on this camera. Um, as I've mentioned in other videos, one of the great things about this camera is you can adapt just about any lens ever made to the camera. The reason for that is it's got a really short lens mount to sensor um, distance. And, and uh, by contrast, most other camera systems have a, a further distance between the sensor or the film and the lens mount. So that allows um, manufacturers of adapters to make an adapter to make, make it so that you can mount those lenses that were designed for other systems onto this camera with ease. So that's a really cool thing. You can mount all kinds of stuff, like a screw mount, like a uh, bayonet mount. You can mount o Pentax lenses. You can mount ancient, ancient uh, lenses meant for completely different formats. Um, you can mount a Hasselblad lens on the thing. You can put just about anything you can imagine on it. You just have to have the right adapter. And the adapter manufacturers are just going nuts with this. So, so uh, it's a nice thing if you've got a lot of lenses and uh, there's something that you like about the lenses that you own, you can put them right onto this camera and uh, get maximum use from them. So as I said, what I'm going to cover today is shooting Leica R lenses uh, on this camera. The uh, adapter that I have on here is a Metabones adapter. It's kind of in the middle of the price range. I think it's about 90 bucks, maybe 100 bucks. I'm happy with the adapter. It's really just a piece of metal with a E mount on one side and a Leica R mount on the other. And um, you know, there's there's no sort of uh, information being passed from the lens back to the camera. It's it's a totally manual uh, adapter, so uh, it, it was not going to send your uh, f-stop back. It's not going to send any focus distance information back to the camera. It's purely manual. Uh, that's what accounts for it being fairly inexpensive. So why would you want to mount like a R glass on a camera like this? Uh, you'll probably see um, on Flickr, maybe other videos here on YouTube, people are mounting M mount lenses. And that's a fine idea. Uh, I think probably the R mount lenses are a better match for this camera because once you've adapted the lens to have the right uh, lens mount to sensor distance, I think a retrofocus uh, design, like on an SLR lens, which is what our lenses are, is a better choice for this sensor. Like an M lenses have a much closer distance, and um, that causes the um, angle of the light coming off the back of the lens, that is falling on the sensor, to be at a fairly strong angle hitting the edge of the sensor. Um, Leica did a lot of special design of the M8 and M9 sensors for that specific issue. So I think that um, using SLR lenses or adapting SLR lenses to uh, these cameras that allow such adaptation is the better choice. Now the downside of mounting uh, SLR glass on a camera like this is the size. SLR lenses are a little bigger than rangefinder lenses. Let me just show you a comparison here. Uh, this is a Zeiss 50mm Sonar. And I'm going to pull the uh, 50 millimeter. This is a 50 millimeter uh, Simicron. I think you can tell in diameter, if not length, the um, R lens is quite a bit heftier than the uh, M lens. So uh, that's one small disadvantage. It's not really that big a deal, uh, though I will admit that once you start putting these bigger lenses on the camera, you're going to want to probably get a grip like this. This is the uh, Sony OEM uh, battery grip or vertical grip, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this improves the handling of the camera by a large degree because of the weight of these big old nice brass lenses that Leica has. So uh, you do end up having to make your camera a little bigger, in my opinion, to make it more comfortable to carry. So why in the world would you want to shoot Leica lenses in the first place? Well, it's pretty well understood and accepted that Leica lenses are among the best ever made. Uh, they didn't make any real dogs. They've got varying levels of performance, but if you stick within the sort of standard focal length, you're really not going to find a bad Leica lens. Um, 
I have some pretty middle of the road lenses here. This is a 50 Summicron. Summicrons are F2 lenses. Uh, I have a video that covers uh, the naming conventions of Leica lenses. You might want to check that out. I have a 90 millimeter Summicron. This is a really, really great portrait lens. And I've got here a 24 millimeter Elmaret, which is an f2.8 lens. So these are, you know, not too crazy. I think they make an 18 or a 19 millimeter lens, and then they go way the heck up on the telephoto side. Um, these lenses kind of comprise my roughly standard three lens kit, no matter what kind of camera um, brand or uh, design I'm carrying. If it has interchangeable lenses, I like to have a 90 on me. I like to have a 50. I like to have a 28 or a 24 or 25. So um, I can carry all of this around pretty easily in my Retrospective 7. Uh, the Retrospective 7 is a little larger than I need for this particular kit, but any other bag I have is a little smaller than I need for this particular kit. So the Retro 7 is working out fairly well. Okay, and real quickly I'm going to show you just how I set up the camera for use with the R lenses, and this goes pretty much for any manual focus lens you're going to use. Okay, so first off, this is a closer look at the adapter itself. You can see it's pretty thick, and that's because, as I was pointing out before, but you probably couldn't see, the sensor's right here. So you can see that the distance from the sensor to the normal lens flange is really short. So on a standard SLR, at least on the Leica R series, this is the distance between the film plane and where the lens mounts. Okay, in terms of settings, Okay, first, one of the things I've done is I've reassigned one of the function menu items. You see that one that I'm turning red right now. Um, I don't remember what it used to be, but I made it so that it is the focal length setting. So when you're using a manual focus lens, uh, and it's a lens that doesn't send any information to the camera, you need to tell the camera what focal length lens you have mounted, and that'll let the in-body stabilization work well. So, as I said, that gives me real quick access to that feature. The other thing that I've done, and this is another feature on the A7 uh, series, and, and I believe they've added some extra buttons on uh, the A7 Mark II, is I've made this C1 button do the focus magnification. So what I can do is if I need to focus on something and I want to magnify it, I just hit the C1 button, and now it's zoomed in. I'm not sure I'll be able to focus on this, and I'm doing it in the back. Of my video camera which is pretty tricky this might be a little too close to actually focus oh, you can kind of see it uh, there's two levels of zoom so I'm just clicking the button to rotate between them and you can also move the zoom point around and then if you hit the shutter button you go back to 1x you get out of magnification mode. Okay, and the other thing the camera offers is what's called focus peaking and you may be able to see the focus peaking coming in and out on that lens as I change focus so I'm going to zoom in and make it a little easier to see and you can see as I get the depth of field indicator in focus the markings start turning yellow or if I get focused down on the uh, rear lens cap you can see the focus peaking yellow that shows that those areas are in focus. I've found that I can't really rely on focus peaking alone, although it's working well in this situation due to me having a very uh, wide open aperture here. But the combination of magnification and peaking is a pretty good one. Okay, I thought I would share a few photos from um, a little shoot I did at the Littleton Historical Museum on Saturday, this last Saturday, using the three lenses that I um, was waving around during the main part of the video. Uh, so these first few are with the 50mm uh, Summicron, and uh, this one is uh, obviously a black and white conversion. I believe I shot this at f4 and uh, 
gives you a feel for just how sharp this lens is. It's nuts. Uh, it's probably my favorite lens thus far uh, on the um, Sony A7 Mark II. So uh, this is one that I could totally recommend uh, if you're interested in adapting a Leica lens to the Sony. Next one, um, also with the Summicron 50. And just to kind of give you a feel for the color, let's see what adjustments I did here. Uh, I did some contrast, a little definition, and I bumped up the saturation a little bit. Let's undo some of that. So uh, that's it with no adjustments. And uh, that's with the adjustments back. I was kind of going for an abstract thing. Uh, again, uh, this lens is uh, really fabulous on this camera. Another one with the 50 millimeter. Really nice. Yet another with the 50 millimeter. This is wide open. Focus on these leaves. And these leaves were flipping around quite a bit, uh, so it's good. I was at a 1600th of a second. You can see how shallow the depth of field is uh, on a 50 millimeter, even, you know, only an f2 lens wide open. You still get pretty shallow depth of field. Look at that. That twig is in focus, but right behind it isn't. And uh, this part of the leaf's in focus, and this part is not. So that's kind of a nice dreamy shot out of that lens. Uh, another one with the 50. This is obviously another black and white conversion I did in Nick Silver Effects. And I uh, I hacked on this pretty good. Uh, I did a lot of work on it in Silver Effects to kind of get the look that I wanted out of it. Um, maybe I'll do another video uh, on using Nick Silver Effects uh, to do black and white conversions. I won't get into it right here. So at this point I switched to, this is at the actual historical museum. The prior photos were at the library and grounds uh, across the street. So this is with the 24 millimeter. And uh, when I pixel peep these, I see some sharpness issues here in the corners. Overall, the shot looks fine. You don't zoom into it. Uh, you know, you can see it's plenty sharp here. But it is, you know, that lens on this camera, either that or I suck at focusing. I could swear I had this at a pretty small aperture. I mean, this is relatively in focus, and so is this. Um, but at the edges, not so hot, not very impressed. Overall, though, uh, happy with the photo, although I like the black and white conversion better. Uh, again, Nick Silver effects. Um, this is also with the 28, and, uh, you know, again, the soft edges, but uh, pretty sharp elsewhere. And, again, I prefer my black and white conversion. Nick Silver effects. This is the interior of the barn, and I was able to, uh, this is a wide dynamic range shot. It's not an HDR shot, but this was in pretty full sunlight down at the bottom and these doors and so forth and then at the back it was pretty dark so uh, the camera did a pretty darn good now this is shot straight to JPEG not raw and uh, I was able to kind of uh, fool around with this and get uh, the tiniest bit of shadow detail in here as I wanted uh, and also have some zone 10 stuff happening at the same time uh, so and and check out that man <laughs> this is screen I guess to keep birds from nesting up in here but um, you know so this lens is sharp uh, it's just not super sharp at the corners okay uh, moving on this is yet another 24 millimeter shot and this shows uh, some of the Leica color you'll get and I did bump this up a little bit let me take the enhancements off so I just pumped it up a little bit and uh, I also added a vignette and I find that a vignette oftentimes and it's real light but it helps to make the central area of the photo pop a little bit so I thought this looked better with the vignette than without um, if I didn't say so and if it's not obvious this is also with the 28 and I think I had this at a wider aperture you can see this uh, these trees up here out of focus uh, whereas this is in critical focus here 
then I moved into the blacksmith shop and uh, I switched over to the 90 millimeter Simicron and uh, took these shots and these are all converted they look pretty nice in color I just like them a little better in uh, black and white I didn't really hit focus perfectly on all of these um, but you know you get a sense for it uh, I found myself trying to react and, and poking on that C1 button to get magnification turned on and uh, so forth is still for me at this point a bit of a distraction so I don't always hit perfect focus but I think the shot comes across well regardless here he is checking out his work and I got just the, the edge of his glass the frame of his glasses in focus and you get a little bit of the seam coming from his breath checking out his handiwork and then a table full of his handiwork again all with a 90 millimeter Simicron so I hope you enjoyed those shots um, not necessarily my best stuff but uh, hopefully gave you an idea of what the lenses do on the camera and how the sensor renders and so forth. So as usual, thanks a lot for watching. Stay tuned for more. Catch you later.